I don't know that I've seen a patient being brought in in a cotton bag before. <laughs> um, but it doesn't even look like it's got anything in it. The mountain pygmy possum. I've never seen an animal so tiny and adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really surprised at how moved I am to see a mountain pygmy possum here. Because there's like only 2,000 left in the wild. It's just mind-blowing that one's actually in front of us. You're collecting DNA, you're putting them into a big freezer, essentially. She's going to very gently pick off any loose hair off of the possum and then she's going to pop it into a cryovial. It's pretty cool that you can use hair. It's way less invasive than taking a blood sample from a sensitive creature. What sort of genetics is on a bit of hair? It's a really small amount of DNA, but you know, given how uh, gene technology is working, we don't know what we'll be able to do with that in the future. It's so vulnerable there on the table, it really makes my heart squeeze. The thing is though, this one individual could be key to resurrecting the species in the future. Hello. What have you got for us? I have our sample from our beautiful little mountain pygmy possum. She's just having some yummy foods, get her energy back up. A nectar treat, which is a favourite. It's a tiny plastic container, but inside is genetic gold. It's a sample of mountain pygmy possum DNA. All right, so what happens now? So we're gonna head straight back to the lab to get this sample into liquid nitrogen. So is time critical? We do wanna get there as soon as possible. We wanna conserve the genetics in this sample as best as we can. And as long as it's sitting at room temperature, there is a chance the DNA could degrade over time. So yes, we wanna get back as soon as we can. Right, so it's like, to the freezers, Batman. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We're taking the sample to a secret location in Melbourne, where they store genetic material from hundreds of native, rare and exotic species. So this is a biobanking facility where our large tanks full of liquid nitrogen live. The samples are kept at minus 196 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, all cellular processes are paused, preventing degradation and preserving the tissue for the future. As liquid nitrogen turns to gas, it produces this lovely white mist. Does that ever get old? No, it's pretty fun to play with. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to grab out our rack now. This is insane. These are literally like the library shelves of DNA, <laughs> aren't they? Like, this one says, frozen zoo. And each of these vials, a different genetic sample of an endangered or close to endangered creature. We're going to pop our pygmy possum sample into this liquid nitrogen tank and if we ever need to use it, we can pull it back out again. And we can sort of revive the species potentially from there? Potentially, yes. Freezing genetic material from our most precious animals is an investment in the future of our ecosystem. But these samples aren't a get out of jail free card. They're costly to maintain, and technology can't yet bring back animals from extinction. Bringing things back from the dead, though, is there a bit of complicated ethics around that? Yeah, it's a tricky thing to do, and obviously we also need to ask whether we want to be doing it as well. Absolutely. In these vials is the DNA, probably of the rarest things in Australia. The thing is, in the future, we may be able to revive species from this. The best way of cleaning up spilt milk, though, is to never spill the milk at all. All right, see you, Pigby Possum. Hope we never have to meet again. Do we close her okay, up? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's much better than my fridge at home. <laughs>